In the previous video, we learned about the basic editing tools included with Nuke Studio and how the multi-tool will do most of what the rest of the individual tools will do. In this video, we'll introduce you to the timeline effects in Nuke Studio that will allow you to utilize some fundamental compositing tools directly on the timeline in real time. So below these tools here, you'll notice this little Nuke icon logo. This is our timeline effects or soft effects as we refer to them. They can be found in this menu here. If you right click on any of these shots here, you'll go to effects and you'll get the same list to choose from here as well. If you're actually inside of the spreadsheet, you can add timeline soft effects there as well by right click effects and then add the effect you wanna create there. So let me jump into, we'll go into the timeline view. Give us more of a viewer space. Now you can see some of these shots already have some timeline soft effects on them like crops, time warps, transforms. You can see that they're also stacked on top of each other. So you can stack these as like separate elements. You can move them around, disable them. If I were to select this, if we look at the, this one right here, and I take the crop one, press D on the keyboard to disable it. You'll see how it disables the crop for me. So let's go ahead and add some new timeline effects to this. We'll, we'll start with this shot we just added in here. So let's maybe give this a gray node, give it some kind of color rather than just a grayscale. I'm gonna select my shot and right click. I'm gonna choose grade. There's also a color correct that you can probably use, but we'll choose grade here. It's a little bit simpler, quicker to, quicker to use here. In here, I'll just give it a simple, maybe greenish hue or color to that. Looks good. Now I know I have a few other gray scale elements that I might want to apply the same grade to. And there's a couple of ways we can go about that. First being, I can copy and paste this grade if I want. So I can copy this, paste it over here. So if I look at this now, it's going to have that same green on it. That's one way to go about it. I can take either one of these grades, doesn't matter which one. I can clone it, use Control K on the keyboard, paste it, Control V, paste it, and you'll see there's a little C here indicating clone that's been cloned. Clone basically means, so if I make any change to one of these, the other one will be affected. So even though I clicked on this one to open it up, the previous shot, if I make any changes to this now, you can see that it's making it to all the other clones that are associated with it. So that's a little bit too much. Let's bring that back down. So that's another method, copy method, clone method. Let's actually just delete these grades on here. And I'll show you one more method that you can kind of use to reuse information. So with this grade still selected here, what I can do is actually save any kind of settings. It doesn't necessarily have to be this grade. It can be another tool that you might be using, but it has preset options where you can save this as a preset. So I'm gonna save it in my CD folder and call it green. I know I already have one named green, so I'm going to overwrite that, and that's fine. So now if I were to create a grade someplace else, I can call in that preset I just created, and it's going to apply to my node for me now. So these timeline soft effects are basically the new compositing nodes that operate on the timeline itself in real time because of the GPU acceleration. So you can play in the viewer, and you can make changes in real time. Since we're on this shot, let's go ahead and work with it a little bit more. I can see that this overlay needs to be sized to these background panels. So what I'll do is I'll add a transform on here as well and stacks right on top of that for us. I'm gonna reduce the scale down so it fits within that board. Just move that up a little bit, there we go. It's good for reference. Of course, it still needs to be tracked and comped and applied to the panel itself. Let's check out what else we can change here. Um, this one will definitely probably need a, a green grade on there as well. Once again, deciding whatever method you want to use, copy, clone, or just choosing from the preset, it's your choice. I'm going to clone this, Control K, Control V. There we go, we have that green on there. All right, and then that one looks good here. Maybe on this one, as his face is being scanned, we want to push in on a little bit. So let's add a transform on this. Make sure I'm at the beginning of this clip. I'm gonna press the up arrow key. Set a key on the scale. Go to the end of the clip for that. Press the down arrow key. And we'll just scale it up. Maybe 3.3. So if we look at this clip now, you can see as it pushes in on his face, he's being scanned. And let's just stack another soft effect on top of that. Maybe we'll do the uh, text effect. I'll add some text over top of this, say scanning. And we'll move that down into position here. Maybe right 
right there is fine. All right. So now if I look at this, we can see we've had our grade on it. We have our transform that's pushing in on it and we have text over it. Now, depending on how you stack these timeline effects up, it's going to determine the behavior of all the other timeline effects that fall underneath of it. The one on the top is going to influence anything below it. So meaning that if I were to take this, because you can see now that as it pushes in and scales in size, the scanning text stays the same size. If I were to reorder this and put it just below the transform, you'll notice now that the text scales in size with the rest of it. That's because the transform is now driving that. At any point in time, if you don't want to see what the if you don't want to see the timeline effect, you can press D to disable it. All right, so I think I want to have the text back on top of the transform, just like so. So leave that there. And let's see what else we can do here in the timeline. Looking over this, it looks like uh, our reference is not laying over top of our plate, so we want to turn on our track blending once again for this. So I'm just going to click it once because it needs to go over. And then I think it's in the position here. This should go over as well, so turn on track blending for that. And there we go, it's laying on top of our screen there. All right, so our, our timeline's really coming together now. Another way you can add a timeline effect is as a separate track item. So if I were to create it on track, so create new track, what we can do is we can add timeline effects to this that are gonna affect everything under that fall under it. One of the commonly used ones is the burn in effect. So if I go right click, select burn in from the effects panel, you'll see now that it creates a burn-in of information over my footage for me, or over my sequence. Now this information is basically being read from the metadata contained within the sequence and the shots, and all that metadata it can be changed or customized over here in the Properties panel, so you can have a drop-down of presets that you can choose from. I want to change this to the reel. If you want to change the sequence, maybe to the track name up here. However you want to set that up, you know, it's going to allow you to read that information in. You frame a time code. There we go. That's fine. So that's a pretty useful one. So we talked about adding timeline effects or soft effects to the entire sequence, to any shots that are underneath of it. You can also add the timeline effect to, say, a version of the shot. If there was multiple versions of this particular shot right here, this clip, I'd be able to add it to one version of that particular clip if I wanted to. So the way I'd go about that is I'd have to actually open this up in its own little viewer. So I'd open in, say it's timeline view, so it's own little timeline there. Close that. I'm going to create a new track for it. And then here I can add in, we'll add in a, a grade for this particular one. And we'll just grade this one. Blue there. So now when I go back to my main sequence timeline, we'll see this little blue line on here indicating that there's a soft effect just specifically for this shot or this clip. If a new version of this came in, it wouldn't apply to that version. It's only going to apply to this version here. All right, so now that we know how to work with some timeline effects, we can continue on setting up the shots in our timeline. In the next video, we'll talk about annotations.